Hello children and welcome to a new chapter the nervous system. So we will be taking a closer look into our own brains now. Now the system that controls all the systems in our body is called as the nervous system. So basically this nervous system has the control of your entire body. It is made up of the brain the spinal cord and nerves how do these three work together the nerves will carry the messages from all the parts of your body to the brain and this message is carried through the spinal cord and the brain will study all of these messages so you receive so many messages there will be so many questions in your head and this brain is basically going to cut down and simplify all of these messages understand it and finally instruct the body through the spinal cord and the nerves as to what it has to do so all of this looks like a complicated process but children it takes hardly a fraction of a second for the brain to understand what messages it receives and finally instruct the action plan for example whenever you see a stone approaching you you have to either run away from the stone or duck so for example if you're going to run away from something the brain is going to instruct the circulatory system and the breathing system to work really fast so that you get all the energy to run so in other words the nervous system controls all of the sense organs in our body without this we cannot see we can't hear smell taste we can't even feel, walk, run or even think. So in simple words, we can't do anything without the nervous system. So let's talk about the main organ of the nervous system which is the brain. Let's talk about the brain. It is one of the most remarkable organs in the human body and it is protected by a bony skull. Now because it's such an important organ it has to be well protected right. So it is protected by the skull and it looks very similar to walnut. Have you children seen a walnut before? If you haven't go and ask your mummy. It's a dry fruit. It's called walnut. It looks exactly like the brain and it is the control center of the entire body in it terms if i have to tell this brain is like a super computer that controls everything that goes on in our body it can store and recall information as and when it needs suppose you are suddenly asked a question in your exam so you would have stored all the information that you study the previous night and when you see the question in the exam you recall the things that you have studied and you write it in the paper so this is called as memory storing and recalling information is called as memory now when we see brain is not just one single part it is made up of three different regions so what are the three different regions of the brain the first region of the brain is the cerebrum then we have the cerebellum which is the second region the third region is the medulla which is also called as the brain stem so we will take each of these regions and study them in detail now We'll first talk about cerebrum. So this region of the brain is called as the cerebrum. As you can see the entire colored region that is this, this, this and this. This entire region of the brain is the cerebrum. So cerebrum is the largest part of the brain and it is the thinking part of the brain. If you can see this diagram here, this is the part of the brain that has maximum amount of folds, right? The more the folds, the more is the intelligence of the person and the more is the thinking capacity. So it is with our cerebrum that we think. And this cerebrum controls learning, it controls memory, it controls intelligence and it is the region from which thoughts arise. Not just that children, the cerebrum also controls all the sense organs in our body. So you can imagine how important the cerebrum actually is. And this region if you see is bigger in case of humans than in most other animals. So this explains why humans are more intelligent than other animals. 
So let's look at the next region of the brain. What is the next region after cerebrum? It is cerebellum. So let's see what cerebellum is. So when you see cerebellum, this region of the brain is the cerebellum. And it is found at the back of the head. If you can see, this is the face of the person. So this cerebellum is towards the back of the head and it controls the movements of the muscles in your body as well as helps us maintain our balance. We are able to walk straight because of the cerebellum. Next part of the brain is called as the brain stem or the medulla. So the green region of the brain that you see here is the brain stem or the medulla. It is the lower part of the brain and if you can see here itself, this looks like a stem. That's why we call it as the brain stem and it joins the brain to the spinal cord. So this is the region of the brain that joins and continues as the spinal cord. And this controls all the involuntary actions of our body such as breathing, circulation, all of this is controlled by the medulla. Now I told you that the nervous system is made up of three parts. First was the brain, second was spinal cord and then the nerves. So we have spoken about the brain. Let's look at the second part of the nervous system which is the spinal cord. So this is the spinal cord that runs along our back and it is a thick bundle of nerves connected to the brain stem. So you can see here in this region it is connected to the brain stem. And it goes down your back and it is protected by the vertebrae of your spine or vertebral column. And several nerves will emerge from the spinal cord and it forms a network all over your body. So you can see in this picture itself, from the spinal cord you can see different nerves that are coming out and it forms a network throughout your body. So let's talk about what nerves are exactly. I have a small picture here. We have a network of nerves all over our body. But in this picture, all the yellow lines that you see here are all nerves. For example, you can see one going up here, one coming down here. These are all nerves. Like this, you have nerves in every single part of your body. And messages travel to and from the brain through the nerve. So basically, these nerves act like the telephone wire that carry messages between the brain and the body. When you have to talk to your friend, you just pick up your phone and call them up and talk to them, right? So the messages are actually transported through the wires, correct? Here, if you see, all of the messages are transported like the wire of the telephone. So, nerves are acting like the wires of the telephone which help in transmitting messages between the brain and the body. And there are three different types of nerves. The three types of nerves that are there in our body are sensory nerves, we have motor nerves and we have mixed nerves. So, what are these three different types of nerves? Let's see. So as I told you, nerves are of three types. The first one are called as sensory nerves. So what are these sensory nerves? Sensory nerves basically carry messages from the sense organ to the brain and the spinal cord. So messages move from sense organs to brain and spinal cord. The brain will study these messages and tell us what we have seen, what we have heard, what we have tasted, smelt or felt. So basically, all our sense organs are controlled by the sensory nerves. That's why the name is sensory nerves. Then we have motor nerves. Motor is movement. So this motor nerves is responsible for movement. They carry orders from the brain and spinal cord to the muscles and glands of our body telling them how to move or react. If sensory nerves report that the eye has seen a stone approaching us, then the brain messages the leg muscles to move or head muscles to duck so that we avoid this particular stone. So this is the function of the motor nerves. What is the third type of nerves I told you? It is called as mixed nerve. The name itself suggests that these mixed nerves will carry messages between the sensory nerve and the motor nerve cells. 
and it is present in the brain and the spinal cord these are the only two places that you will find mixed nerves so let us talk more in detail about how exactly reflex action takes place and what is reflex action now if you touch a hot object you immediately withdraw your hand from it right now this is an automatic reaction nobody needs to tell you that oh you you've put your hand over the flame take it off do anybody have to tell you that no the minute you touch the flame you realize that it's hot you take your hands off automatically so it happens automatically even if you're not concentrating on it you might be thinking about something else and by mistake you put your hand on something hot immediately you take your hands off such reactions that do not require your concentration are called as reflex reactions and in such cases an interesting thing is that the message needn't go up till your brain it just reaches your spinal cord and the spinal cord itself senses danger and takes an action quickly so that your body does not get damaged suppose for example if you see here this person is taking his hand near something that is hot and this message is sent through the hand to the spinal cord the spinal cord without any delay even without transferring the message to the brain it immediately takes a decision and sends back the reply to the hand saying take the hands off that place so this is through a motor nerve and you can see that there is movement away from the flame now the brain is responsible for coordination of your body you already know that there are some movements that we have to learn day in and day out we have to learn to master them for example riding a bicycle or playing a piano or playing any musical instrument or learning how to sing these are various things that we have to learn and we keep practicing them over and over again and the interesting thing is once you've gotten enough practice the brain takes over then automatically these actions will happen even if you're thinking elsewhere the next time you yourself observe this when you're riding a cycle you'll be thinking about your mama you'll be thinking about your papa probably your friend at school you'll be thinking about your favorite ice cream but you don't forget to pedal the cycle right it happens automatically that's because your brain has taken control of the thing that you have already learnt so this is called as learning isn't this so intriguing and interesting children so with this we complete the part 1 of this chapter let's do a quick recap of what all we covered so we looked into the brain which is the master organ of our entire body that controls everything which is like a super computer and we spoke about the regions of our brain we said that the brain has three different regions they were cerebrum then cerebellum and we saw that it has the brain stem which is called as the medulla then we spoke about the spinal cord we said that the continuation of the brain stem leads to a long extension called as the spinal cord and we saw from the spinal cord several nerves come out and form a network throughout our body from which messages are passed on so we saw nerves and we said that nerves are of three different types one is sensory nerves then motor nerves and we saw mixed nerves we saw sensory nerves control the sense organs motor nerves make sure that movement of muscles as well as glands take place and we saw mixed nerves are seen only in the brain and spinal cord and then we spoke about reflex action we saw how exactly a reflex action takes place and how sometimes the brain can take over automatic control of our body so with this we finish part 1 if you like the video hit the like button and i just like to leave you with one small message use your brain in the right way all of us have such marvelous miraculous brains that can do just wonderful work so I'm sure you all are very very intelligent so you just need to use your brain in the right way so good luck doing that thank you